Ethics Commissioner. And the woman who should have been supervisor from District 8. Yes. And who's going to work with me and everyone in this room to make sure that District 8 goes for John Avalos. Woo! Our next mayor, Ms. Avalos, give it up for John. Woo! Well, let's give it up for Queers for Avalos. Woo! You are beautiful, and it's so great to see you here. Uh, I am so inspired by the history that's in this room, by the talent that's in this room, by people who have been so long committed to ju labor justice, economic justice, racial justice, immigrant rights justice, a queer justice, all of this is what this room represents, and it's the best of San Francisco that is in this room. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dolores Street Cafe. Uh, Dana Oppenheim for opening the doors here. Yay. I want to thank the organizers from Queers for Avalos for being here and making this event happen tonight. Yay. Can you mention in the same bill with Supervisor Campos, uh, my friend and colleague, is uh, to me is a great, great honor. Someone I look up to on the Board of Supervisors and someone who could easily be in my place uh, running for mayor and you would have my backing fully if that were the case today. Uh, former Supervisor Harry Britt uh, is here today. Uh, uh, Assemblyman Tom Amiano uh, is uh, not able to make it, but he actually was part of uh, putting this event together. And I want to thank Tom, and I'll, I'll talk more about Tom later. And I'll mention other names as we go forward, but uh, my name is John Avalos, uh, and I'm running for mayor of San Francisco, and I believe in coalition politics. In the Excelsior District, I represent District 11, which includes the Excelsior District. That is the district where Dan White lived. That district that existed back in 1978, when Dan White was last a supervisor, does not exist anymore. We have a new Excelsior District. We have a new District 11. We have a District 11 that reflects the great diversity of San Francisco. We have a District 11 that is a microcosm of this great city. And San Francisco is a sanctuary city. And we talk about sanctuary city, I'm going to talk about it in its broadest sense. San Francisco, we talk about sanctuary city as a, a city for immigrants. Well, San Francisco is a city for immigrants, but not immigrants from anywhere. It's, an, it's for immigrants from outside the country, but it's for immigrants from inside the country as well. People come from San Francisco for many, many reasons. And we have an incredible blend of residents who have been longtime residents, who were born here, and newcomers here. And it's a city that is constantly remaking itself over and over and over again. And now this city is at the crossroads of how we can remake ourselves to be a new city of vision for the rest of the country and for ourselves here today. We have, uh, I, I just listened to, again, I get a lot of inspiration from uh, the life uh, and work uh, of Harvey Milk. Uh, in his last tape, he talks about uh, a young person from Altoona, Pennsylvania, who has, uh, is facing incredible discrimination where he lives, trying to find a place where he feels that he can be accepted and comfortable. He, had, he came to San Francisco because San Francisco is a sanctuary city. He came here because he knew that he could be out of the closet in the queer community, can live a life to his fullest, can find opportunity here, can find housing here, can find relationship here, can find love here, and we need to make sure that that's a city that continues to live and people can thrive in in the future. Sanctuary City is much more than that. As I said, we have people coming from Latin America, people coming from China. There are Jewish families that are immigrating, that have immigrated here from the Ukraine. People coming from Palestine, from Israel. We need to make sure that our city can, can provide that kind of opportunity for everyone. You can be free of discrimination and make sure that our education system is providing what it truly needs to provide. Uh, I'm a parent. I have two kids uh, who are in public school. My son, uh, Emiliano, uh, he's six years old. My daughter, Renee, she's nine. My wife is a teacher in public schools. Uh, we are 
committed to making sure that we have a city that works for the great diversity of families here in San Francisco. Heterosexual families, same-sex families with children. This is a city that we know is supposed to help these families thrive, and I am more committed than anyone else who's running for mayor to make sure that that can happen. And that's what I've dedicated my life to as I've been working in this city for many, many, for many, many years. Um, I've been on the Board of Supervisors for uh, for two and a half years. Prior to that, uh, I was been a, I've been a legislative aide. Uh, and prior to that, I've been a social worker and a community organizer. And as a community organizer, for me, how I do my work is to make sure that I have my ear to the ground, that I am learning from the communities of San Francisco, that I understand what the great diversity of this city is, that I don't believe that I know what everyone's thinking, what all the answers are. And so I look at myself as being a true ally to communities that I don't necessarily uh, identify with uh, as part of, but and an ally to, like the queer community, that I have to have an open ear and to learn uh, as I uh, as things change in this city. When I first came to San Francisco, uh, I went to I got my I went to social work school. I got a job uh, at Mission Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, working in Clinica Esperanza. It's, a, it's an HIV clinic that serves uh, Latino men uh, who have sex with men, uh, and some who identify as queer and some who don't, uh, Latino women as well, but also our whole diversity of San Francisco as well. I took that job because I wanted to understand my role as a community organizer and as a social worker, how I need to learn who is facing the great uh, uh, crisis and epidemic of HIV and AIDS in this country and in this city. Uh, and that was something that I had no idea about. I did not have an understanding of the magnitude uh, of that at the time. It was about 95 and 96 before protease inhibitors had come in and helped to stabilize the health of many people who had HIV. Uh, and to me, that was part of the, my experience of wanting to make sure that I could grow and grow with this city as things are changing in this city. This is the kind of leadership that I want to bring, that I've already been using in San Francisco, but I want to bring to the mayor's office. And it's something that we have been lacking, I believe, in the entire history of this country is a mayor and a, uh, and a, a city hall that truly, truly is accessible and open to people to have input in and to shape what goes on in this, in this, in, in, in this city. Uh, and that's something that I truly, truly believe in. To me, change does not, change happens. Change happens automatically. We know that global warming is happening. That's a form of change. But the other change that has, has to happen is we have to change our behavior to make sure that we can respond to the crisis of global warming. So I believe that we have to create the conditions for ourselves to create that change. That is about based on relationships. That's based on community organizing. That's based on making sure that people have access to government and people are able to engage and talk with one another. That's the kind of leadership that I bring is that ability to create those those conditions, those changes. Uh, my work around City Hall, has a lot of it has been around the budget of, of uh, every year in and year out, I've been working on making sure that the budget is balanced equitably, that it's representing the interests of all of our communities across San Francisco. Uh, and I've, I've worked with Eileen Hansen, uh, who's one of the hosts today. Uh, she helped to create the People's Budget. Uh, the People's Budget has been instrumental over the years in making sure and making sure that our budget is accountable. So we are actually uh, assuring that we have uh, housing housing services. And over the years, we were where the budget, the, the mayor has the budget, the mayor has actually cut uh, cut uh, funding from housing services and HIV services through the organizing, the efforts of the people's budget. We've been making sure that that money goes back. And that money is based on, uh, th those interests are, are come from the community members, like Brian Basinger, who's also been fighting year in and year out uh, to make sure that we have housing for people who are living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, and then every year we have a cut that comes down our way, and because of the efforts of Brian and the relationships we have that Brian has at City Hall, that I work with Brian and with, any, my, with my colleagues with Brian over the years, we've been able to put money back into the community and then making a dynamic relationship that's going to make, that's going to really prevent uh, San Francisco from being a city that only works for the wealthy. Uh, this city unfortunately is working more and more for the wealthy. We're seeing a great uh, divisions in wealth. We're seeing wealth accumulate into fewer and fewer hands. Indicative of that uh, was just recently uh, Barack Obama raising money for himself, running for, for, uh, for president. 
uh, came in, he flew in on a Monday, uh, he left on a Wednesday, he left on a Wednesday with $13 million in his cam campaign coffers. At the same time, we were able to find, to cobble together about $250,000 for summer school for kids. And everyone was cheering how great it was. We were able to save summer school for kids for 50, for 50 kids or however many kids. It wasn't that many kids that, that, that uh, $250,000 could, could form, but it just showed like how incredibly rich our country, our, our city is, how much wealth there is, but that wealth is not being distributed in a way that really can work uh, for San Francisco. I want to change that. And my colleagues like Supervisor Campos, Supervisor Mercurini, Supervisor Marr are a big part of that. And that change can happen because we know if we don't, if we fold our hands and let things go the way they are going, we're going to see that uh, many of our friends will be leaving San Francisco and we have a lot of friends who have already left San Francisco. Uh, we'll be seeing the diversity of San Francisco uh, leaving the African American community and the Latino community moving out in droves as it's happening. We will fail to really hold uh, this city accountable to making sure it's a livable place for everyone. That's something that I want to change and I believe the leadership that I can bring, working with you and making sure that we are working together to make that happen is a change that we really need the city to overcome these change, these difficulties, these obstacles, and to, to promote a city that truly represents all of our interests from our working class and middle class communities. And this campaign is essential that we win. And we're going to win. Yes. This campaign. And the Coalition politics is not about it's not about one community, it's not about two communities, it's about all communities that have a stake in this city and making it progressive, making it livable, uh, making sure that uh, we have uh, support and opportunity created everywhere we go. So it's going to be in the Sunset District where people don't often know who John Avalos is and don't often identify as progressive. We can have a progressive movement in this city that is not watered down the message that can actually apply to people on the, on the west side in the sunset, yeah, I would say even in St. Francis Woods, there are people in St. Francis Woods who are going to think that, hey, a progressive in San Francisco is something that we can support because they believe they can support uh, uh, the wealth staying in this city, they can support diversity in the city, they can make sure that our schools are improved, they can support small businesses like this one here, we can make sure that we have a sanctuary city that can continue, we can make sure that we have an open government that provides access for people to shape what decisions we make and we can run the corporations who have been controlling a lot of what happens at City Hall out of the back rooms and back to downtown where they still can influence what goes on but they're going to have to contend with our neighborhoods who are raising our voices to make sure we have a way to challenge that power and with me and our, our, our and us working together we can do that this year and this November when we win on November 8th. Thank you. Esperanza Macias and Gwen Craig, thank you. 
Thank you very much. Ragnar Esperanza for a number of years. In fact, I met Esperanza during the Amiano race in 99. That was my actually first time that I had ever supported a candidate. I worked on a lot of electoral issues, but never on a candidate. And it was a person like Tom Amiano, who I felt had integrity, honesty, and vision, that finally told me that I could support a person running for office and not just work on issues. And it's in Tom's uh, legacy, and he's still around with us, and he's still going to do great work, but it's Tom's legacy on the board uh, that I think brings in people like Supervisor Campos and myself uh, with a common vision to work towards supporting working class communities communities, queer communities in San Francisco, and I look so much to him as a role model and someone I hope to someday emulate, uh, just in uh, his, how much he's meant to a lot of people in this room. Uh, Peter Galata, and, and all the rest of the cohorts, thank you very much. I'm so honored to be here supporting you. Uh, you're supporting me, our working together. This is not a campaign about me, but it's a campaign about San Francisco and how we can influence what happens and create the kind of city we know we can create that's gonna be responsible to us and our communities. Thank you very much. Aren't you glad we're supporting John Avalos for mayor?